Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Um, uh, Chair Long, um, I really enjoyed my time in the uh, in the Energy Committee this year. Um, well, actually, it was more of a climate change committee than an energy committee, but nonetheless, um, I, mean, I think we had a healthy debate on on uh, green energy legislation. Um, I'm going to be honest about this bill, um, and actually about le legislation really throughout this entire session at the Capitol. That so much of the legislation has provisions about race. Um, and, you know, when you direct money to certain races, um, it's, it creates prejudice legislation. And, you know, this, this uh, the, the discussing all of these provisions about race, um, when we're talking about energy policy, which really should be blind to race, um, it's, it was very uh, frustrating to hear that and um, hearing from my constituents about um, how, you know, so much more money is directed to certain areas. Um, it was uh, it was very frustrating to see, and I think that the irony in having this racist legislation that that uh, that directs money to, to particular race or to protect or to help a certain ethnic group um, is is because what we're talking about is promoting green energy, and and you know green energy is uh, creating these products that are that are made mined in third world countries, and we've talked about this in committee. Um, you know, almost a majority of the nickel that we import comes from the Philippines. And they have continually shut down the mines in the Philippines for polluting because they have horrible, horrible conditions in which they mine nickel in, in the Philippines. And when we, uh, when we talk about the other, the, the, the materials that we're mining for these products, we have to look at the supply chain and compare the environmental damage that we're doing with each of these products that goes into green energy products. Now, the, the, Batteries that are used for uh, electric vehicles, for instance, which is heavily promoted in this bill, are 65% nickel, 65%. So when we talk about preventing nickel mining in Minnesota, and yet we promote nickel mining uh, overseas, we're actually just shifting that environmental destruction to third world countries. And, and that was that's that's very frustrating to see. Um, I had a, a, a long discussion with a member from across the aisle who, um, after hearing me talk about this for three years, uh, spent some time on the internet finding um, how there's major corporations that are heavily invested in the Congo because they're mining cobalt. And this cobalt is mined using 50,000 child slave labor. You know, so there is a you know, British and Swiss held conglomerate that owns most of these mines that deal in slavery. And that is what we're teaching our kids, especially when we, when we in this bill, um, put money forward for electric buses. And this electric school bus has 1,250 pounds of nickel in its battery, and also a lot of cobalt, and of course, lithium. And if you, if you would go online and, and search how lithium mines uh, completely destroy the environment in which they're mined, um, that is something that we own by promoting this legislation and using taxpayer dollars to, uh, to subsidize these industries. Now, another industry um, that I did a lot of research on that's impacted by this bill uh, because we promote wind energy is neodymium mining. In neodymium mining, um, which occurs almost entirely in, in China, um, mines this material to make the rare earth magnets that are used in um, that are, that are used in uh, uh, the wind turbines. Now, there's 17 elements that are known as rare earth metals um, that occur in these hard rock deposits. And they are, uh, you know, they're used to make the alloys for these huge permanent magnets that are found in the, in the synchronous generators and the direct drive and the onshore wind turbines and, and that we have here in Southern Minnesota. Um, and these are also used in electric cars. Without these rare earth magnets, the generators and the electric motors in these cars would have to be so much heavier to be powerful enough and, and they would be less energy efficient, but it, incre uh, it increases the amount of, of mining that we're doing. And these, these, uh, these materials, when they're mined, um, in which they're also mixed with radioactive materials such as thorium and, and, and uranium, when they're very hard to separate out. And so doing so requires an enormous amount of energy um, to process it. And of course they use a lot of acid to strip these minerals apart. And, and as you can see from the, from, the, from the picture behind me, there's a five and a half mile wide toxic lake 
in, in the city of Batao in China that has permanently destroyed the environment and has, has polluted the water for millions of people. This is the environmentalists dream to have green energy, but what they don't understand is that the green energy is really destroying the environment in, in third world countries. Now, there are reasons to mine these materials to make products, and I support the idea of doing so, but we should be mining in the United States where we have uh, strict environmental standards and labor standards where we wouldn't have slavery and we're not gonna destroy the environment. Um, it is a balancing act between you know, saving the air uh, versus poisoning the earth. And no one seems to understand that we are destroying the environment permanently with these products that we're mining overseas. Now, also in this bill, because we, we promote wind energy, um, we, have, uh, we have an issue of wind turbines, and we discuss this in committee, where each wind turbine weighs you know, thousands and thousands of pounds, and they are just being shipped out of state because we don't bury them here, and there's no useful byproduct for them. We haven't told the industry that you must recycle these wind turbine blades. They used to be made of fiberglass, which was recyclable. Uh, but because they would they would break so easily, they melted them together with plastic to make glass reinforced plastic. And when those things are melted together, there's there's no useful byproduct because you can't heat it up to to melt the glass without burning the plastic and contaminating the whole product. We talked in committee about how maybe we can grind these up and use them in asphalt, but the people that that resurface roads don't want to breathe that stuff in either. So they're being shipped out to Wyoming and buried in the landfill. There's 1,100 of them that were just buried in the landfill. That's millions and millions of pounds of plastic. Um, and we have environmentalists worried about plastic straws. Yet this is the environmental cost of green energy. We must continue to, have to, to look at the supply chain for green energy so that we can actually assess the damage that we're doing, the amount of energy that goes into this. Like Representative Igo said about transporting these materials from overseas using ships that, that are burning heavy diesel um, that, that's, that's polluting the environment, there is an environmental cost. There is a carbon output for every product that's produced. And somehow this, the, the creators of this bill and the people that are voting to think this, that we're saving the world believe that, that windmills and solar panels grow out of cornfields and that they're actually not mined out of the earth and that there's a ton of energy that goes into them. Now in the solar provisions in this bill, um, I think solar is really great, but there is an enormous amount of solar waste that's created. Um, in 2015, 200,000 solar panels and an enormous industrial solar array were shattered by a tornado that whipped through. And we have a lot of tornadoes in my area in Southern Minnesota, and I'm sure we have across the entire state. And they do an enormous amount of damage to an industrial solar array, which is what I call solar gardens because it's, we're not gardening there. This is an industrial solar array. And there are frequently about 32 acres of solar panels in these clusters um, that are, have tons of toxic minerals in them. And when they're broken, they can't be recycled. They are just, they, they're broken and they're in the ground and we try to pick up as many pieces as we can, but there are chemicals that leach into the ground and we poison the, we poison the water. These, there's, there's not enough provisions. I offered an amendment to require the, the companies have insurance for, to guarantee cleanup, um, but that was rejected. We need to do more uh, to, to make sure that we're protecting, our, uh, protecting the water and protecting the ground um, instead of just focusing on um, what, what's told to be carbon free or clean energy when it's not. Um, we don't allow large scale hydro. Uh, Representative Quam brought that up too. They, they have uh, six and 700 megawatt power, uh, you know, renewable energy, which is almost entirely carbon free. There's a very a small amount of carbon used to create the concrete and place it in, in, in some maintenance work, but it, it, it generates a ton of clean energy. And yet this doesn't count as renewable energy under Minnesota, under Minnesota law. Why not? We, we need to do more to promote uh, the right kind of energy and to assess all energy sources and, and judge how much carbon and damage that each energy source is doing um, before we, push the industry in one way or the other. And there's, I know there's a lot of lobbyists that get, uh, get rich on green energy and this is a great thing for them. But, um, you know, we also, I, I think we, we talked about earlier about burning trash. Um, this is a, a great source. We, it's a renewable energy source because we have trash all the time. 
And so uh, burning that trash as opposed to putting it in a landfill reduces the amount of methane. That's, that's, a, that's a terrible greenhouse gas. Um, and we need to weigh that. And we need to say that it's no longer allowed because there is some carbon output uh, is ridiculous. There, there's, a, there's a ton of methane that's exposed, that's emitted when this material breaks down. Uh, we have a facility here in Mankato that I toured with other legislators and they're doing a great job at reducing uh, the landfill waste and generating electricity while we're doing it. And interestingly enough, the, the bill that, that, that bans burning trash doesn't actually ban burning of trash. It bans generating electricity from burning of trash. You can still burn it, you just can't generate electricity from it. Well, how dumb are we? That, 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 that just doesn't make any sense. So um, members, it's no surprise that I'll be voting against the bill today. Um, I, I really enjoy green energy. I think it's exciting stuff, but we should not be ignoring the fact that we're doing terrible environmental damage and there are human rights atrocities around the world, especially slavery, especially child slavery. I mean, teaching kids about the, the school buses, um, <laughs> electric school buses and how great they are. And at the same time, putting a, a you know, 2000 pound uh, lithium ion battery that's made 65% nickel and a whole bunch of cobalt that was mined by ch children in the Congo. Um, it just seems to be, uh, hypocritical of us to, to mandate those things. So uh, members, I, I, would, I would ask that we, um, we really uh, stop supporting slavery. Um, I know that, that one of the uh, investments in the, uh, for, for most of the state employees uh, is in the company that owns mines in the Congo. So you know, by voting yes in this bill, you're, you're helping your own stock portfolio, um, but that we should be not supporting that. And we should actually move to take that company out of the state's uh, retirement fund as well. Um, this is, uh, I would encourage members to do some research and um, understand that the human atrocities that are being caused by green energy and this rush to uh, increase uh, nickel and lithium mining around the world. We can mine nickel here safely. If we can't mine it here safely, if you won't let us mine it here under the strictest environmental and labor standards, we certainly should not be requiring that it be mined overseas um, in third world countries with, uh, with slave labor. So thank you members um, and uh, please vote no.